to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. So I actually recorded this uh, video <coughs> without any audio. Um, I'll show you some reference here of what I was going to go for. For uh, Let me pause the video real quick. So I recorded this um, without any audio because my kids were being really loud and noisy, but I thought instead of doing my usual music while this just plays, I thought I might just record this audio over, uh, over track as the video itself plays, and I'll try to remember what I did. <laughs> so here's a video I found that I was kind of going to use as reference for the little inside uh, lights that are inside the, um, for the little lights that are inside the shell. Uh, I'm just going to use those kind of spinning uh, casings for the lights themselves. And not doing anything uh, too crazy or too uh, detailed, really. I'm just going to get something inside there where the light's coming from and hopefully get a result that's uh, decent for the purposes of this play that I'm in. Here's where we are so far with the uh, police light as it is at the moment. I'm going to close that render because it was making my uh, viewport run a little slow. So just going to hide that top case so I can start working on uh, the little lights that are going to go inside here. I'm going to make uh, some layers I can use to help hopefully uh, run the scene a little bit easier so I can make them invisible or give them like a reference layer or something like that that I can use uh, to make it pretty easy. Add in the background and the lights to a layer also just to again be able to hide them if I need to. It's very important to name your layers. So first things first, I need to like enclose this gap to make some kind of platform for the little lights to sit on. I'm going to use the append to polygon tool there to fill in that gap. Then I use the fill hole command to fill in the rest of it. I added the first face there with the append to polygon tool first before I used fill hole so that the, the hole was a bit more manageable. So fill the hole there after I've kind of enclosed that area that I want to fill. And then for this I'm going to use fill hole again for those. I noticed the geometry was a little bit wonky down here so I started doing some, some fixes. Alright, once I was satisfied with that, I just fill the hole here. Looks like here I decided to use a pin the polygon. Works the same way though, fills the hole up. Alright, we're going to start creating the light. So first I'm going to create the little um, center post that the two lights are going to be kind of rotating around. Just create a cylinder and shape it to form the base. edges. Then with a series of extrudes and create this little center post coming up from the middle. And I wanted the post to be a little bit skinnier so I went back into my history, went back to the earlier extrude and reshaped it. And of course I beveled 
the top face. <laughs> Love my bevels. Okay, for the light itself, just create a sphere and go from there. It's going to be a half sphere, so we're going to kind of put it in position. And if you hold down the J key, and as long as you actually click on the handle like that, it will rotate incrementally by 15 degrees instead of being a free rotate. So you can rotate 90 degrees pretty easily. I'll lower down the subdivision's axis and increase the subdivision's height just so it's more round. Deleted half of it. Filled the hole for the open for the opening. And then we're going to extrude and bevel and so on to get the uh, inside of the light. Give a little bit of a, a lip around the outer edge there. It's a bit of a border. Soften the edges a little bit. That can be done at any point. You don't have to do it earlier. Just checking back at my little reference I have here. creating the inside of that uh, light where the bulb would actually sit and where the light actually comes from. I wanted it to go in and then come out with a little bit of a roundness to it. And then when I got to this point I used, um, I believe it was poke face Yeah, poke just to give it that center point in the middle. And I can grab that point and just pull it out. Just to give it a little bit of a roundness to uh, that shape. And then I soften the edge. Alright. Yeah, pretty relatively simple. No, nothing too com nothing too complicated. I have to say it's kind of odd trying to add commentary to the video after the fact. You can note I can notice all of my little uh, mistakes I made and things I would have done differently and so on. So here I'm kind of testing position. What you may notice already that I didn't notice at the time is that these lights are way too big. They're not going to fit within the housing that I have hidden that I have hidden right now. And I'll find that out soon enough. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and mirror them over. And then like, oh, shoot. Okay, too big. Let's try again. Let's get rid of the extra ones. And uh, reshape. moving the fifth point down to the bottom and then I'm scaling them down so now I can see how big they actually should be to fit within the housing that I have. Looking back at my reference, reference is always good to have. So because they are so much smaller now to fit inside there, I'm going to decide to, instead of just having two lights, I'll probably have three just to fill in that space a little bit better. made a new layer to handle the housing. I can toggle it on and off relatively easily. So duplicating 
the light there and repositioning them to kind of fill in the space and to be equidistant apart. Checking their pivots, make sure they all rotate the way I expect. And then finally, I just delete those and just copy these over. So, what I do there is I, I group them, and I, the group pivot point is typically at the origin, and I tend to do, I tend to build on the origin, so the origin is always in the middle of my scene. So then I can just scale negative one in the x direction in this case, and it flipped the duplicate over to the other side. But now, I, then I realize doing that is a little bit premature. I need to do all the materials and stuff, so it's much easier to do all the materials first, then create duplicates once the materials are, are all on there. So here I'm adding an AI standard surface, and I'm using the chrome preset to give it just a nice chrome. And here I'm realizing that I've hidden my light, and I, I'm wondering at first, why is it not rendering? So I had to go back to my light layer and unhide it, and then everything should work again. There we go. Now we can see it. Now one thing about um, myself is since I am uh, predominantly from the game industry, I don't do a lot of rendering. Like The Arnold rendering is something that's relatively new to me. I have been learning it a lot more in the last year or so since I teach it at school. <laughs> so it's kind of important to uh, be able to instruct the students on how to use Arnold and to render their scenes, but it's not something I'm like an in super expert at. So. I do, I do a lot of trial and error, which really I think most people do, so not too bad. So I'm playing with the settings for my materials, adjusting transmission weights, just kind of looking around seeing what could be done to uh, get the kind of look I'm going for. Playing with uh, different kinds of lights and so on. Just to, and some of these lights I haven't even actually tried before. But here I'm using a sky dome light just to kind of see with a global illumination what kind of effect that has. I'm not going to be using global illumination in the final though, so I pretty quickly I think I uh, get, rid of, get rid of the uh, global illumination from the um, light dome. Yeah. Then I tried the uh, physical sky. I, I have used that one before also, and, and it puts like an actual sun in the sky. Which is kind of cool. It gives you some controls over the sun, uh, with such as how high it up, how high up in the sky it is it, and at what angle is it uh, rotated to cast shadows in your scene, and so on. And it looks very realistic as the sunlight. If you're familiar with Mental Ray, Mental Ray also has a physical sun and sky that's pretty uh, similar. Okay, so I'm selecting these faces to apply a new material to for a uh, emissive kind of light bulb style material. So we're assigning a new material at a new AI standard surface from the Arnold uh, material list. And there's a preset actually for this, uh, a, like a light bulb preset that I'll probably use as a as a starting point. So that toward the bottom we have an incandescent bulb up a little bit. <laughs> Hit replace for that one, so we'll replace it with this incandescent bulb uh, appearance. And it's going to be a blue light, so I'm playing with the colors a bit. Go down to emission, where the uh, glow effect is, and I decided to put the blue down there. Select these faces and apply the same material to them. So add existing, and we'll do the blue light. Alright, 
duplicate them around. Here I noticed I had keyframe accidentally set, so I'm breaking the connection here to get rid of the keyframe. Making sure nothing else key is nothing else is accidentally keyframed, and we're it's gonna be all good. Duplicated those lights over, and then we're going to need to make a red light material. standard surface. Call this one uh, red light. Make sure you grab the right material, not the chrome one. Incandescent bulb as our starting point. So we grab all these faces and assign that existing red light material. Alright, gonna get it render see what it looks like. And while they're not like doing any kind of crazy glow effect, they are definitely uh, self-illuminating. Alright, so I had added that surface for the lights to sit on, but I hadn't changed the material, so I changed it to chrome now instead of that clear plastic. So now there's like a chrome material there for the base or where the lights sit on. In the interview now you can see the shadow is a lot uh, better. It's not uh, see-through. The That chrome material is actually blocking the light, giving us a proper shadow. And I'm going to start adding some lights. I thought I'd use uh, little spotlights for each of the little spinning police uh, kind of bulbs. So I'm going to test this out. Place one light there in front of one of the bulbs and just kind of see what the result looks like. Adjusting my cone angle, get a nice big angle, getting just to get the light shape to be about right. I point snapped the light to that center point and then I moved it forward a little bit so it be as accurate as possible. So just kind of curious, what does that look like? Not like much so far. Okay, and adjust the light settings, increasing the exposure until we get some kind of uh, results. Or right now it's too dim. Like I said, a lot of trial and error, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit more. <laughs> Bear with me. So now I'm playing with the exposure, getting to the level I think is appropriate. Exposure looks like this is a 10. Just interested in that part, so I'm going to use the little blue area to focus the render on that small square. Alright, so here I'm in the render settings seeing if I can get that uh, transparency to be not quite so uh, noisy, increasing the transmission sampling. It makes the rendering take longer, but you get a nice cleaner uh, end result. All right, see here I'm adding in some render passes. You can find this in the render settings under AOVs. AOVs is an uh, acronym that I can't remember. <laughs> what it uh, stands for, but it's essentially render passes. You can separate specular levels and diffuse levels and emission levels and so on into their own separate pass. You can see there, I'm, that's the diffuse indirect, diffuse direct. Let's see, this is emission. Specular, so you can have all the specular highlights in one layer. They have specular direct and indirect, and specular is like the combination of both. Transmission direct wasn't doing anything, but transmission indirect was giving us something. And so the idea is you can take all those different passes into uh, compositing software like After Effects, for example, and 
put them together in different ways and you can adjust each layer separately so if you wanted the specular highlights to be uh, more bright you could pop you could potentially adjust their contrast and such in the editing software after rendering instead of having to go back and render again you can try and fix it all in post as they say in the compositing application or if you're just rendering a still image you can even take your different uh, passes into Photoshop and combine them together there and uh, do different things to them. So now the video is starting over uh, so thanks again for watching. Just real quick I went over the um, render passes in my classroom like I talked about just a minute ago and again you can take those different render passes into Photoshop and you can put them all together there and I, I the example I gave in class was a car and I had it all rendered out as a red car but took it into Photoshop had my different diffuse render passes available that I could then change the color to green for example and it looked pretty good anyway this sorry this commentary was a little bit boring um, I'm gonna try and make sure that I can actually record the audio next time <laughs> uh, so it's not quite so odd thanks for bearing with me uh, let me know if you like this better than just having music playing while you just watch I don't know you tell me what's better Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I will talk to you all later.